Hello, Stitchers. Uh, let's see if we can remember how to do this, shall we? <laughs> I'm Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. This is Stitching with Nicole. This is my series on my um, YouTube channel where I talk about all things stitching, cross stitching, quilting, felt stitching, all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would like to hear more about, stay tuned. It is Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. I am filming this on Saturday the 21st. So welcome everyone. Welcome new stitchers or new viewers to my channel. Welcome back to everyone. It has been a hot minute since I have been here. I think it's been about four weeks. This is the longest I've gone in the two years I've been doing a floss tube. Uh, where I haven't come to you with an update. Um, for those who follow me for card making and paper crafting as well, you know this is called Stamp Timber at Simon Says Stamp, the company that I um, do work for. And so I have had paper crafting content every single day this month. That is, I do a lot of content anyway. This is paper crafting is my full-time job. So for anyone brand new here, um, I do paper crafting, uh, mostly card making, and but other kinds of paper crafting as well. It is my full-time job. I am super um, blessed, I guess, to be able to craft for my full-time job. I love it. And I am a multi-crafter, meaning I love cross-stitch. Those who watch me for that know that. Um, I love quilting. I love felt stitching. Basically anything you make, I love. If there were more hours in the day, I would probably pick up a whole bunch more new <laughs> hobbies as well. Um, so I generally do a weekly update video and it has just been, it's been really hard for me. I thought I would have one up last week and I filmed a ton of content. Um, I was filming it in segments. I don't know that that works for me very good, like vlog style. I hats off to those of you who do it really well. I don't know what I filmed and what I didn't. And the bad thing is, is I thought I was so smart. I'll film it and I'll put things away. And I did. I have no idea what I filmed. It got to Saturday of last week and I, I couldn't make myself just film the video. I really couldn't like finish filming it and editing it and putting it all together. And that's on me. I, I just, you know, it's on me. I just couldn't make myself do it. And so I didn't end up finishing or filming it. So I do know this. I am going to have some cuts in this video. I do have to edit this heavily and put some of that content in. I mailed off a tree skirt that I had pieced to be quilted and I showed it to you before I sent it off. I don't have it back yet, so I'll show it when it comes back all quilted. Um, I send all of my quilting to Caitlin of Knot and Thread. I have used her for several years now and hands down the best experience every single time. So I highly recommend her. Um, I mailed that off. Let's see what else. I hadn't, I had shown some progress stitching. And since then I've done more on the pieces that I had already filmed. Plus I finished something, I think. So I just am scrapping that and we're going to start over. And I really have no idea what I shared last time. So it's going to be a, if I've shown it, oh well. I have two FFOs. They are from the Huga Holiday Sal. And I know you've probably seen them 
if you followed for that um, or you watched the finishing tutorials for that. But I do want to show them here on Floss Tube. I have a finish of a stitch that I couldn't put down, quite frankly. It is Spooky September, Sampler September, so I have starts for both of those. I've been kind of stitching some things with friends for both of those things, and they kind of check both of the, you know, boxes for both Sampler and Spooky September. I'm not a huge, well, I ha okay, I have not been <laughs> a huge sampler stitcher. I have a few started, um, but I'm not like, you know, lots and lots of sampler starts and finishes. However, <laughs> that could change, I could see. I could see me going more that route because I've noticed some things I'm drawn to are definitely more sampler-ish. And I think it's a really good reminder to never say never because I, a lot of things that I was drawn to when I first came back to cross stitch, not that I'm not drawn to them or whatever, but I know I've noticed my tastes and things have changed and I've kind of found a rhythm and what I really enjoy stitching. So it's always fun. I, I love the progress. I love the story and the evolution of where, you know, where we find ourselves in our stitching. So um, anyhow, that to say, I want to show my progress on that. I know last time, one thing that I do remember without rewatching last week's video or week, ha, last month's video, um, is I said I would show my Halloween charts and whips and kits and all of that that I have in my stash. So, um, I am going to do that. Today. Full disclosure, later me popping in here, realizing that with a probably two hour video, I'm guessing by the time I get it edited, I did not share any Halloween charts. So guess what guys, that is going to be next week. I had a lot of catching up to do and a lot of things to share with you. So stay tuned for the Halloween charts next week. Um, and then after that, we'll do the fall charts. Thanks for understanding. Today, I do know today might be a a little bit of a long video. So I always put timestamps down in the description below so you can definitely hop to those things you're interested in. I would like to thank my dogs, Odin and Frank, for chewing on toys when they had been sleeping until I started talking to my computer screen. <laughs> This, this episode is sponsored by my annoying dogs. No, I'm just teasing. Um, so I have a lot of stitching things I've been stitching on here and there. One wonderful thing this year about Stamp Timber, for anyone participating in Stamp Timber as well, one of the most wonderful things this year has been that um, the releases, the collaborations each day are at noon Eastern instead of midnight. Oh, you guys, it has been such a blessing for me. I know that there's some people that it's not worked out very well for. And I, it's just, it's always hard. It's really hard every year. I know that they've listened to a lot of feedback and we're trying this change to see how it works. I personally, it has been so good for me. I'm not tired um, because I can sleep in. If I could, this, here's the funny thing. If it had been at midnight last year or this year, it would have been okay because I could sleep in. I It's the first year I don't have a high schooler to get up and get make sure he's where he's supposed to be. He's on his own. Uh, so that is great, and I could have. But I will say it's been lovely not having to remind myself at, you know, 15 till midnight. Well, for me, it's 11 p.m., but still. It's been really nice for me not to have to remind myself to check in and be there for the chat. I love it, and I will do whatever um, whatever is decided for, you know, upcoming Stamp Timbers or whatever, because I just, I love, I love being able to chat with you guys. It's a very, very fun month, but having it at noon has been the best thing for me. I feel like it's during my work day. It is on the weekends as well, but it's okay. But um, 
I, I feel like it's during my work day. So it's just part of my day. And then I can go on with creating and working and editing vid videos and making projects and whatever. And then in the evening, I wash this makeup off my face, put on some jammies, uh, put my hair up in a fun bun and stitch. And it has been so good. I don't have to think, okay, you can only stitch till 1045 or 1145, whatever. Um, and then you have to go get on your computer. And then I'm just either I'm wired and then I'm wide awake or I'm so tired. There were a few times last year where I had to set an alarm and I went and this was probably dumb and I went and laid in bed because I was so, so, so tired. And I had to set an alarm for myself to make sure I was up. I just don't feel that level of exhaustion that I have felt before in previous years. So I guess for me personally, it's been a very, very good change and I hope it's a good change for everybody else. Okay, I've talked a lot. Today, what we're going to do, we are, I have FFOs, I have finishes, I have whips, I have haul. That is gonna be pieced together because that is really what I had filmed mostly previously and I had filmed it and then put it away. Uh, I have lots of goodies that that quarter shop has shared with me that I can share with you. I have giveaways. I did film that. I'm going to check it. Uh, but I had filmed a lot of that already as well. I have winners from the previous, uh, floss tube and I have some, the quilting sewing projects to share with you. Oops. Sorry, Frank, right underneath my desk, right at my feet. Um, always, they're always right here with me. And then, oh, um, I'm going to share because I'm sure that she will share in her video on Monday, but Jessica had a birthday earlier this month and in typical Nicole fashion, uh, Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, in case anybody didn't know, I'll tag her down below. Uh, in typical Nicole fashion, I like to be late with my presents for everyone. Um, and I had actually come up with an idea. I made a, what I call my prototype for myself. I'm not wearing it today, um, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll wear it next week. I made her a gift and I stitched her a gift. And so um, I sent them to her and I know they arrived. I actually thought they weren't arriving until Tuesday, but they arrived mm, Monday after she had filmed already, which was so funny. Um, but I was so thrilled that they did arrive. And I'm going to just throw, I, I filmed some of it. If it's good, I'll throw it in. Otherwise, I'll just throw in some photos. But really excited. And I did something that was new to me for the first time. So I want to talk about that as well. And um, yeah, so we'll just let it take us where it takes us today. And I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, I wanted to show a gift idea. And this took me one, well, two evenings to do the front and the back, but it probably would have just taken one um, if I had the dedicated time to it. So these are the stitch bags from Shepherd's Bush, you know, where you can stitch on the mesh canvas bags, but maybe you don't always want to stitch the back. Um, I want to show here, they have like a little example of a little pillow and a little scissor fob. This little chart is also included. This is just this stitch, but in a smaller size. And I wanted to stitch this. I, I like the hive and it all, but I wanted to stitch this and I, oh, sorry, I'm out of frame. I wanted to stitch this and I wanted to do it in colors to match a friend and kind of her colors. So what I did was I went to my stash and I pulled some color and cotton. This is such a great project for any of those color and cotton flosses that I get in my club kits and all. And you can see my stitch here. But I wanted it to be tiny, like almost a little um, pin cushion or scissor fob size. And you can see her name I've stitched here. But what I want to do is I went or what I did was I stitched the outline back or I back stitched, pardon me, the out the uh, border. Words are hard. I back stitched the border and then I back stitched the exact same size down below 
and this time I did stitch the little scissor fob image from the chart right here. I stitched that and then I back stitched her name. And I just found this on Pinterest. Um, it was a great little back stitch alphabet. If I can find this again, I will link to it. I guess it has the name here. Uh, but I just needed something basic so that I could customize the back of this little scissor fob pincushion thing. We're going, or I'm going to put interfacing on the back of this, of each of these. I'm going to hand stitch them together doing the same method like we did for the uh, Biscornus or the little scissor fob tutorials that I have shared in the past here on my channel. And I'm going to stitch it together, do a little cording around it, and finish it off. I thought it would be cute, even has just a little pin cushion in um, a travel stitch case or whatever, but you can see it's going to be tiny. Now, it's tiny because of what I stitched it on. This measures, let me look here, one, oh, this is really hard to read, isn't it? Hold, please. This mat is not my regular cutting mat at all, and I don't like it. I think, hold on, it is about two and a half by one and a half. So it's really tiny. And the reason it's so tiny is I stitched this on 46 count. And I was able to stitch it super fast, you guys. I am addicted. This is 46 count raw by Zweigart. Raw is one of my favorite colors ever. It's kind of got a grayish undertone to it, I would say. It's a great basic neutral. And um, we're gonna finish this and I'll show you the finished, um, the finished look here in just a minute. But I just was thrilled with how this turned out. I thought it was so stinking cute. I, in, they make fantastic little gifts. So again, this is the stitch pattern from Shepherd's Bush. Now, if you stitch it on 40, it'll be just a little bit bigger, 36 a little bit bigger. I would say probably 36 and anything else, think pin cushion. Um, 40 probably would be okay as well, and obviously 46, I think can be a little scissor fob or a pin cushion, whatever. Now, the reason I chose to do the back stitch instead of just stitching this to another piece of fabric, first of all, it's tiny. Turning out something so tiny like this, I was a little concerned with how it was going to look. So I didn't really want to do it that way. And I figured stitching it together, you know, back to back, using the method for Biscornus or any kind of dimensional finish would give a much cleaner, prettier look. So that's part of the reason that I chose to go this route. So I'm gonna go put it together. I'm gonna make sure my interfacing fits within the back stitch line. You don't want it to go over the back stitching. I'm gonna put it together and I'll come show you the finished result in a little bit. Okay. It's been a couple hours, I'm back. I actually redid this just a little bit because at first I had it right here and I don't know why I did that. I like my little scissor fobs to finish in the corner. And my thought kind of is if the recipient, you know, wants to just stick it in their uh, stitch case or whatever, you can even just snip that and just leave little tails and have it just be this little itty bitty pincushion pillow, whatever. Um, but anyway, I like it in the corner. Itty bitty little uh, cording. So this is two six strands of floss twisted together. So 12 individual strands total, but I wanted it to be tiny. This is a teeny tiny little pillow. You can see it here in the palm of my hand. What I did, obviously front has had back stitching line, the back had a back stitching line. I interfaced both the front and the back. I put them together. Everything about this was hand stitched. I whip stitched through the back stitch line um, you can check out the video tutorial right here if you want to see how I did that. 
whip stitched it together, so hand stitch it together, and then uh, I left one little opening. I created a funnel with parchment paper because it was smaller than my craft funnel, and this is so teeny tiny. And I filled it with walnut shells. And I did fill, or fill it with the uh, crushed walnut shells this time because I really felt like it was going to give, you know, if you want to sharpen your, your needles or anything, you can do that. And I like that it's got, I mean, there's hardly any in here. It's so tiny. But it does give it a little weight. So it's going to help, you know, hold on to your scissors. Um, and then when I was done, I made my cording and I did hand stitch it, whipped it in place all the way around. I just used, I think the lighter shade of blue is what I had enough left of to use. Whip stitched it in place, finished with a little knot. We have our fun little uh, cording right here. So I whip stitched all the way around, made uh, kind of did a little overlap, knotted it, and then I did knot it here in the corner, just doubles, kind of double secure. Anyway, here is my little scissor fob. I am obsessed, obsessed. Um, I think it should say Nicole. <laughs> I'm going to have to make myself one. I love it. It turned out so, so good. If you make a little scissor fob from any of these Shepherd's Bush patterns, tag me. I would love to see yours. I feel like I need one for every season. What do you guys think? Okay, um, so here is my scissor fob all finished. Okay, let's talk finishes. We're also going to be OGing it. By OG, I'm not using my down camera. So a bad thing happened to my laptop. Um, I find that my sound is better for floss tube if I use my microphone. And I have, I have, you know, the little imports, whatever they're called, for all of those things and my down camera cable, um, which is my video camera. But here's the thing that happened. I spilled coffee and I think it got into the ports on the one side of my computer, which has multiple ports, which is sucks. And it's also where the power cord goes. Uh, luckily, the power cord seems to be working. The other two are not. So I might be buying myself a new laptop here soon because this just really isn't working for me. <laughs> and um, but we'll see. So I'm just going to hold things up today. I figured, you know what, we're just going to make it work. And it kind of stinks because I'm very used to a down camera just because of how I work. But who cares? This is how most floss tube is done, right? So I am going to start with my FFOs, as I mentioned. Let's start with the beautiful Huga Holiday. This is Huga Holiday. This is from the Huga Holiday Sal that was a collaboration between myself, the Stitch Along Coordinator. Kathy designed this of Hands On Design and Chantal of 141 Design. This is the Huga Holiday board. I hope that everyone who wanted Huga Holiday got it. It did go into the vault at the end of August. So um, it will be released at a later date, but I don't know when that will be. And I finished it into this Huga Holiday frame. I stained it with um, a Minwax stain. And then I did finish it with this cute little Tim Holtz plaque down here at the bottom. Peace on earth. Um, and it has some little uh, rivets. They are also fake that I glued on with E6000. For all the details, you can um, watch the finishing tutorial that I will link right here for you guys and down also in the description, just in case. Sometimes the links that I try to put here and I do put here don't show up, so don't come at me. <laughs> I try really hard. When I tell you I've put a link here, I have. And for whatever reason, the little bubble doesn't pop up for me. I love how it turned out. I love this piece. Um, I have planned to stitch this again, actually, for my daughter and her husband. So I will see if I get that done or not. Um, I hope so. But I love the staining. It was definitely how I had envisioned my piece. Kathy did a beautiful paint job. Chantal does sell the paint for that. And the Huga Holiday board 
is available in Chantal's shop. So I will have a link to that down in the description as well. Um, the, the board is not gonna go away. It's not going into the vault. You can use it for other things. If you have something similar in size, I know I talked about um, Liz Matthews Patreon piece for, I think it was for August. Uh, so it's already gone as well. But I think in certain stitch counts, it would fit in here. In fact, I kind of hope to do that. Um, there's gonna be other things that fit in this. It is a three piece. So it's a back piece and it's this inner frame and outer frame and if you order this from Chantal excuse me you do get the board the mat board to lace your piece to so it's wonderful now I will say there are okay it's a not super great there's a couple spots I don't love my lacing full disclosure I had to redo my lacing I think I will probably redo mine uh, relace it. That's the beauty of lacing as opposed to gluing as you can do that. So before Christmas comes when I am a little less busy um, and at work, I am going to relace it. But it's not terrible. It's not terrible and I probably could leave it. But this is Huga Holiday. I love it. Okay, up next. So there are five ornaments in the Hugo Holiday chart, and um, I didn't, I've put the chart away, so I apologize, I don't have it. I only fully got stitched one ornament for the finishing tutorial, but here it is. I am stitching the rest of these because I wanna put them on my tree this year. This is the tree, and I finished it kind of similar to Kathy, but in my video tutorial, Odin, stop digging in the carpet. In my tutorial, I um, share how I use my paper crafting dies as templates. And then I really kind of showed how I put a trim on or uh, whip stitched my trim on, put the pieces together. This is a fabric backer and added some fun little wood beads. There's a video tutorial for this as well, so check that out if you're interested. What I love, because this is on, um, I think this was press on board that I used for these, it is very lightweight. These definitely don't have the weight to them that wood pieces do. Uh, I have a tree that's more neutral, so I did use the winter, winter forest, is that what it was called? Good grief, I can't even remember. So I use the greens and neutrals palette and I'm really excited to stitch the rest of these. I'm gonna finish all of mine like this um, and then I will show them to you, but I'm, I'm here for it. Are you guys, I am a funny crafter. I was gonna say stitcher, but crafter. It gets to this time of the year and I am like, we got to do Halloween, we got to go do fall, we got to do Christmas, I, and I want to do it all. And my mind is going faster than what these hands can create. I wish there were more hours in the day, honestly, or I, I should get better at crafting these things all year long, but I'm not good at it. I like to craft in season, I think, but... Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get these done because I wanna decorate my tree. I really want this tree. Okay, this is such, I'm gonna go off on a tangent. You know when you're mindlessly laying in bed, scrolling on Instagram right before you're trying to go to sleep? Probably what you're not supposed to do, but we all, not we all, I'm sure some of you are smart. It's what I do. And this video popped up, I want this tree from Walmart and it is sold out already. And I have been stalking, trying to find it. Um, it is kind of a sparse-ish type tree, but oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And it's exactly what I envisioned for my basement and I'm trying to get it. But none of the Walmarts here in my area have it. Anyway, that's another tangent and I'm not gonna say anything else because I don't want everyone buying it. <laughs> no, that's terrible, it's fine. I have a tree that'll work, but I really, really want this tree. It is exactly what I want for my basement decor. So spoiler alert, it's later me again. Um, and while I was editing the video, I remembered that I wanted to keep checking to see if that tree was in stock anywhere local. It is! 
okay I've had to drive like 25 minutes and um it's downpouring now so I made it at home I think before like the weather's supposed to get super bad I had to take my glasses off they're covered in wet so I found it I'm going to link it down below check and see it's really cool it's the my texas house line it's super this is the seven and a half they have a nine foot one too but i wanted to show isn't it cute okay it just looks good it looks like a good primitive style tree um the for anyone in the wichita area the valley center walmart has two left in seven and a half foot <laughs> uh it was the only store when i checked online that said it had it in stock. And maybe they're, I mean, they're just starting to stock the Christmas area. I know, it's not even Halloween. No one come for me, please. Anyway, just thought I'd share. All right, those were my only two FFOs. I have so much stuff to FFO, so much stuff. Should we make October FFO month? I think we should, I think we should. Okay, let's talk finishes. So the next thing I'm going to share is when pumpkins glow. Last year, my friends Jessica and Chantal both started this. And this was a chart released by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. Um, and I had the teeniest, tiniest start. If you guys watch my previous video, I did talk about it. Um, I had started down here and I had started at the border. And I do think, okay, just a side note. I do think that's a good place to start if you struggle with counting. Um, I want to hold this close. This is a chart. You can see where the words and the a lot of the little um, images are really far apart. I'm always looking for a grounding force when stitching something like this because it's very easy to get off. This is charted um, on and stitched model stitch on 40 count to fit on this board that Chantal designed for Brenda for this. Um, I think it's called, is it called the Panorama? I'll link it down below. Um, but I did buy the board to finish this on and I'm going to finish it very similar, I believe, to this. But because it was 40 count, that's where I was going with where to start. I'm glad I started here. I did, I'd had a I thought I'd gotten off and I wasn't as comfortable stitching on 40 last year and I had just set it aside. In fact, I think I told you guys in the last video, I put it away. I put it away, um, didn't get it back out because I thought I'm just going to stitch on something else. I'm going to finish it different, blah, blah, because uh, it's fit. It's on a uh, Ligonier Latte by r, &R. Yeah. Um, and so I thought maybe it was the fabric. I mean, it was me. <laughs> we know that. Anyway, but I stitched over here, and I'll show you my stitch in a minute. So I stitched to the center. I did these guys, and then I started the words, and I got to be honest with you, I hadn't finished the entire border. That had been my initial thought. I should have. I got off, and I did end up having to frog most of the words, and the crow I frogged twice and I think that's it, and the stars. This star and this star are in the wrong place, but I, I accounted for that when I fixed the words. I felt better, I, I tried to fix it, but it was off, I could see it, and that drove me crazy. So let me grab my, my stitch to show you. And here is my finished stitching. I love it. And I'm going to do what everybody else do and does and, and use my design board so you don't see through it because I think you can see it so much better. There's magic in the night when pumpkins glow with candlelight. Believe it or not, I ironed this. I might, I might have to be a little more aggressive. I might have to use some starch. What do you guys think? Because it is really wrinkly. There's that crease that goes through it. I mean, I'm like, what the heck? I probably am just going to flip it over and starch it from the back and see if that takes care of it. But I'm going to finish it. Uh, I might lace it as well. I think that might take care of a little of the wrinkling after I iron it really good. 
but I love it. All the called for floss with the called for fabric and just the cutest. So I told Chantal this um, once I was finished stitching. I almost could have, when I was talking about all the frogging, I almost wish I would have just stitched them and made them an ornament. I think I may stitch them again and make them an ornament for my Halloween tree because I think these little pumpkin head people are the cutest and a round ornament. Wouldn't it be darling? Absolutely so fun, but I love the whole thing. It's beautiful and it turned out just so, so sweet. So that is my finish. It's When Pumpkins Glow by With Thy Needle and Thread. Okay, we're going to talk whips and then I will talk about new starts. Um, first whip. I pulled this out because I feel like I should finish it. I want to stitch this design, but it has been... I couldn't remember, why did I not pull it out? Um, let's talk about what it is. Let's start with that. So it is the Salem Sisters Apothecary from Primrose Cottage Stitches. I was lucky enough to snag one of the finishing boards. So I have the finishing board, I've had it. Um, I had started this, I hardly have any of it started. And I was like, why am I not stitching this? I wanna get this done, I wanna get it finished for this year. It's it's all, you know, it's uh, black work, it's all one color. It should be a fairly simple, easy stitch. I think I've finally put my finger on it. So full disclosure, all I had, here's what, here's my stitching. All I had was this, I believe. All of this is new. All I had was this. And you would probably say, just finish it. I know this is a 32 count fabric because the model was stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha. I know that this is 32 count vintage country mocha. I absolutely detest stitching on this. And I like vintage country mocha. It's two strands and that's the problem. So here, here's where we're going with, with what I need help with. Um, should I, there's two schools of thought that I, that I have pondered because I'm not stitching anymore on that. I'm not stitching anymore on it this way. Should I stitch on 32 count with one strand? I have done that before on 32 count. It's going to give you a little bit more of a vintage look. This chart definitely could work with that. Or should I stitch it with one strand on 36 and just account for that on the board and know that I'm going to have a much wider border and maybe have to mat it on a fabric? I don't really want to. I really love the simplicity of this. What, what would you guys do? I, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of different um, <laughs> feedback. I don't want to stitch with the two strands. It feels really tight to me. Now, granted, everything, I'm almost certain, everything else I've been stitching, minus the Huga Holiday, has been one strand. I love one strand so much. So um, would you just stitch this on 32 with one strand, or would you stitch it on 36 with one strand? Tell me in the comments what you would do. I want to stitch this. It isn't that I don't want to stitch it. I, I totally want to stitch this. I just don't want to stitch it this way. <laughs> I know that's really dramatic. So um, the floss for this is Weeks Dye Works Coal. Is that the called for? Oh, it is. Yeah. So, um, and I love it. I love the design. I'm, I'm leaning towards, I probably should have done a sample of stitching uh, one strand on the 32 count especially since I feel like it's really tight on this 32, that might be where I'm running into issues. So um, that that is one thing that I've worked on and I worked on it very briefly. I mean, I I worked on all the rest of the, the word Salem and then sist, I did all of sisters and I started on apothecary and I, it was funny, I'm stitching along and I went, stop, 
just stop. You are hating this. And I was, I was absolutely hating it. So, okay. So that is that whip. Let's talk about this whip. And this whip is actually what I've been currently working on. And I mean, I, I'm almost at the point where I might just monogamously stitch on this one until it's done. Maybe throwing in like ornaments for breaking it up, but I think this is what I'm gonna work on until it's done. Last year I started Midnight Watch by Blackbird. I love, love, love this um, because let me look at this really quick. Yeah, this is a 2009 chart. So I know I was able to pick it up last year. I think it was reprinted and I think it's been reprinted again, but um, I love this. And don't let it fool you. Like, I guess in my mind, I'm like, it's huge. So tiny. <laughs> um, I am stitching it. The call for fabric was 30 count 18th century brown. Um, could not find that. I didn't, I just picked something else. So I will show you mine, but um, yeah, I want to finish mine like immediately. So let me get my board. I'm stitching on 36 count Bramble by Picture This Plus using all the called for floss, one strand over two. And this is my progress here. I'm going to go this way. So good. So here's the funny thing. If you saw my previous video, I think I'd only had like here or maybe no, I only had like this. I had the teeniest, tiniest start during a Zoom stitch with friends. I was able to like get all the way over here and maybe started down. Um, and then I start or I outlined the moon and I outlined the cat. Since then, I went ahead and filled in the cat added the bats. I came down and added the little row up here um, on top of the roof. I did my stars. I outlined the roof and then I started to outline the house and decided to do this vine. And then I did the, the house outline all the way down to the bottom, filled in my windows and my door frame. And that way I, it gives me a nice base for, for finishing up the house. They, it does have orange shutters or this is ginger snap color. That same color for the shutters. Um, but then I am somebody, I do like a border. I know that borders, some like them, some don't. I was afraid I'd get off on the border. If you, I think I talked about this before, but if you've seen anybody else talk about stitching this, it's not consistent. So the border, I did all of the dark work for the border. So, and there are changes. See how it's not perfect? You really have to pay attention. So I had stitched part of this so I could kind of keep track of where I was for the border because I was really afraid I'd get off. So that's part of why I did this much of it. Plus now the moon, I just sit and do a fill in. I do one strand a day. I just started that. One strand of fill in a day and then I work on whatever else. But the inside, the outside is all going to be filled in with that ginger snap. And I did start working on that. But the inside, it is not. I did not skip this one. There is not a ginger snap right there. So, or a, the little flower, whatever it is. So that is my progress for Blackbird Midnight Watch. Um, I love it. You can see it's pretty, it's not going to be that big. This kind of fills my spooky September and sampler September because this is going to have that alphabet down here at the bottom. So I love that it kind of fills both of those and I would like to have this finished so I could go get it framed. So, so pretty. In fact, I'm going to go drop off a few things. I know I've been saying that for a while. I've put it off. That's just the honest truth right there. I'm going to go drop off three things to get framed and I'm hoping when I pick those up I can drop this off to be framed because I love it and I would love to display it this year. Super excited. I think this might be my first big big 
<laughs> black bird finish. Maybe it's a medium, a medium. So Midnight Watch, and it's on 36 Count Bramble by Picture This Plus, which I know I said, but I love this color. I want to stitch something else from Blackbird on this, and I probably will. I'm keeping it. These are where my Blackbirds go. Get it? <laughs> this is a, a, a folio from Rika of House and Stitch and Stash. I mean, look at this. I love, love, love her folios. In fact, that floss in here is for Away We Ride, which gets to get started when Midnight Watch is done. That's my rule. I've decided. I'm really trying to stick to my my little rule. Rules. We'll see. All right, we're going to just tuck that in here. So hopefully I don't lose it. Okay. Um Nope, I do have another whip. They these are kind of new start whip finish. I know I showed one of these last time for sure. I can't remember if I showed the other one. So I talked about I have a Halloween tree and I finished the trick or treat from the Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee from Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. And I want to stitch all of these for Halloween. I love them. And I'm going to turn a lot of them into ornaments for my tree. So I know I showed trick or treat, but I also started Ghosts and Goblins right here. I am stitching mine on 40 count, right? Hold, hold please while I look at the book really quick. Yeah, 40 count winter brew. The, the book calls for Brenda's brew. I did not have it. I started mine on winter brew and I like it. It's probably a little lighter than Brenda's brew, which is why the ghost is... Once the ghost is filled in, you're going to see him a little bit better, but I, I like it. I like it a lot. So I started Ghosts and Goblins. That's not the one I said I was going to start either. It was completely random. I have not worked on him a ton. I, I started most of that, and then I just did like one strand of the, I think it's hickory sticks, for uh, the, oh, <laughs> that's all I have done since the first time I picked this up. But they're really quick to stitch. I love them and I'll stitch more. And I know you're seeing the Wicked Without Coffee. I mentioned that I'm also going to stitch the Primrose Cottage 13 Spooky Smalls. Not all of them, but several. And Wicked Without Coffee was my favorite from this book. There's several that I really like, but I am changing the colors to the same colors from here. So I did, let's just look and see. I think it's Hickory Sticks. It is, it's Classic Color Works Hickory Sticks. These are the colors. And I literally just picked and pulled from there. So Wicked Without Coffee, the words are Hickory Sticks. The spider and the hat are Weeks Dye Works Onyx. And then I don't know what the little, the band around here I think is like Oscar. I don't know. And then the, the little buckle on the hat is one of the gold colors. I literally just pulled from that because I want them to coordinate. But little teeny tiny because obviously in these 13 spooky smalls, I'll tell you what, what it was, the sample was stitched on. It was stitched on 32 count and I stitched on 40. But here's a look at all of the designs. I do really, I like the little sign one. I like the October 31st. Um, I love the pumpkins on the cake stand. So anything that I think is going to be easy to translate into the colors from Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee, I'm going to do on here. So that is my progress on ornaments. I am hopeful. I'd like to go ahead and finish these two. 
um, into ornaments and get them on my tree because my tree is up. I showed you guys that already. My tree is up, so we will see what we can get to. So that is my ornament progress. And let's go ahead and roll in to new starts. So partly why I want to roll into new starts after talking about the ornaments is I have a new ornament start. Kathy of Hands On Design so graciously gifted me some of her ornament charts. Now, I did not realize until she did this amazing reel on her Instagram, probably a Facebook too, but this, I always, I looked at this and thought, oh, they're so cute, but I guess I just could not imagine them on something other than black. And I didn't want to stitch mine on black. That's not the vibe I'm going for, for my tree. You can see mine are definitely more of that primitive type look. And I think these are a little more modern-ish. Well, you can see down here in the corner that I have never even looked at on her chart. They are charted in a primitive version and what does she call it i love what she calls them on her chart there's the chalky palette and primitive palette and i'm like oh dur of course i want those i love them and so she gifted me so this is fright this way and i've actually started uh hocus pocus and i'll show you that i just started it so it's a it's a pretty small start uh witch's pantry and again primitive palette And we have Rhyme Time. So this is their Fright This Way um, series from Kathy. And I'm going to hold that primitive palette closer. She does, in the chart, there is a link to the finishing tutorial for these. So, and a template. So if you purchase the charts, you can figure out how to finish these. I'm going to finish mine into shaped ornaments like this. And here is the one I've started. So I did start the signs of the season, Hocus Pocus. I am going to stitch mine on 36 count raw linen by Zweigart using the called four weeks dye works threads. And there's my start. So that's just the little start here. I'll show you the chart. That is my start for this one. Isn't that so cute? I think it's going to be awesome. Here, fun story. Look what's on here. Remember this from, uh, I think, the Summer Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine? Ha <laughs> ha. This is how I roll. I need to finish that, too. Remember that October, finishing October. I think that's what it's going to be. So that's my little start for that, and it's stitching fast. I If I would have a nice little block or chunk of time a couple of evenings I think I could knock that out so that's another ornament I'm working on let's talk about um okay so I mentioned I'm stitching a lot of things with friends the first thing when I was at Kathy's finishing class for the midnight garden with the pin cushion and tray my friends Lori and Heather were picking up Polly Maria by Hands On Design, and this was a collaboration with Kathy of Hands On Design and Jenny of the Shanty Stitcher, the shop there that we went to and the, who put on the class. And this is a reproduction sampler. So remember how Nicole said she wasn't doing samplers. Such a lie. There we go. The lie has been debunked <laughs> or, or whatever, uh, or it's brought out into the open that I lied. Um, I thought this was so pretty. The blues really do it for me. And this is the original down here. This is the reproduction, restitched and recolored in a little bit lighter palette. And you can get the threads. They are Gloriana Silks. First time using them. Oh, it's probably bad that I've used them because I love them. They're so good. And all of you who have used Gloriana Silks probably are laughing because you know. But um, I started this with my friends. And I am going to have to look up my fabric because I totally can't remember. I know that's really annoying, isn't it? 
I'm going to have to go into my Instagram and scroll to the beginning of this month where I said what I stitched this on. 36 count old lace by handmade by number 12. So here is my start. 36 count old lace by handmade by number 12. That is an Australian company. I totally love, love their linen. Um, and I am using the original palette. Here are the Gloriana silks. It's very, I mean, it's just a very simple palette. Three colors is it. Most of it is that lighter blue color. I forgot my board, but I'm not, I'm going to roll with it. And I decided how I'm going to stitch mine. I have a couple of tips that I think may help. Tip number one. Um, it is divided into pages. I think it's like here, here, here. I'm stitching all of page one first. And it does have this skinny little border. Just one row of crosses. Now, it's easy to get off. Here's my tip. If you watched my old, uh, any of, I think it was one of the old fashioned Sal, Sal from a couple years ago, uh, where it had a border and we talked about stitching the border. I stitched the border in tens. So I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, half cross. On 10, I would full cross. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, half cross, then a full cross for 10. So I could do 10, 20, 30, 40, and I could count across. Super easy. Same thing for the little row of solid stitches here. This helps me not get off. And I did that for the first page here and down. I haven't been able to get back to this as much as I would like to, but I have no set date. So we're stitching it together. Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, said she's going to join in. She bought the chart at the pep rally last year. Uh, shout out to everyone at the pep rally this weekend. Uh, fun seeing everybody's photos. Um, and then Lori gifted her the floss for Jessica's birthday, which was super sweet. So I hope Jessica gets a start on it as well. But the blues got me. My bedroom is in blues, and so I am going to hang this in my bedroom. I think it'll be beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's Polly Maria. If you want to join, definitely join. I'm going to put the hashtag on the screen so it's not annoying and I have to get my phone out again. We did come up with a hashtag for it. Um, but if you're going to stitch it, we would love to see your progress. Tag me. Um, I also will put Lori and Heather's Instagram handles here on the screen. Tag us and I'll put them down below um, so that we can see your Polly Maria progress. And definitely please tag Kathy of Hands On Design so she can see as well. All right. Dear Lord, it's 48 minutes in and I am still talking about stitching. This is what happens when I go this long. Okay, my last new start and stitching progress to share with you guys is a start that um, I think Jessica is starting. I don't know if Jessica started yet or not. I'll have to check with her. Um, but Rika of House and Stitch and Stash and Jessica and I were talking about it, and I know Rika has a start on this as well. It is Plum Street Samplers Jack's Bash. And I... Um, I saw Olivia of Pumpkin Hollow Quilts stitch and finish this, and it's really what inspired me. I mean, I even told her that. I was like, oh my gosh. And I immediately went and bought the chart last year, bought all the floss, kitted it up, and I just never started it. And so be when Rika and Jessica were talking about it, I thought this is a great time. And Rika made a good point that it kind of fills the sampler vibe as well because it has an alphabet. So it fills my spooky September and sampler September um, heart, I suppose. I am using all the called for floss. And here is my little start. Uh, that Haunted Mansion, not for the faint. Uh, for whatever reason, that little guy took me forever. But I have stitched in the upper left corner. I do start in the upper left corner, and I'm doing my same little 
trick. Anyway, so I have the upper border and the side border, and then I have a nice little start down this side and across the top, and I did start the alphabet, but I love it. It's called Jack's Bash by Plum Street Samplers. I have quickly become a huge Plum Street Samplers fan. Very, very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, a couple of little things that are going to be upcoming stitch alongs next, not hosted by me. And think of them more as a start along, not a um, scheduled stitch along, if you will. The first one um, is something that was just decided basically this morning, even though we've been talking about it since we saw it come out. And I'm going to pop it up here on the screen right here, right here. It is the Annie B's Harvest Moon House. When I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, have to have it. Um, and Jessica was the same. And I know you, if you've watched Jessica's videos, you've heard her say this, like she's gonna start it immediately when it gets there, etc. cetera. Um, and then Rika, also excited about it. And Rika sent us a picture this morning saying she got hers already. So <laughs> um, mine is scheduled for delivery. I ordered the chart immediately. It was, I got it from Fat Quarter Shop when I got the in-stock notification. If it's still in stock, I'll link to it or I'll just link to it anyway. Ask them to get it back in stock. Um, but I picked it up and I think that's going to be, don't quote me on this, an October 1st start for Jessica, Rika, and I, um, but I'll let start along. And it's a start along. I'll let you guys know for sure. So that's the first thing. I also picked up her other chart with the pumpkin on the crow, and I'm not going to look it up again because I had to pause to go look it up, up Harvest Moon. Um, I picked up that chart as well. So I'll show both of those probably in next week's video. But that is the first thing. I did remember me saying I want to stitch everything? I literally want to stitch and quilt and make everything. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is Jessica and I are going to start the Annie B's 12 Days of Christmas Stockings. So full disclosure, my friend Lori picked this up for, okay, no, we're going to start completely over. When this came out, I loved it. Loved it, loved it. I thought they were super cute, but I just don't want to stitch them on black. And my mind, I guess, could not envision stitching them on a neutral for a more primitive palette. So Lori, when we're on our trip, Lori's like, I'm going to order black fabric. I think she may have, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong. And then I think even before we got home, she found someone on Instagram who's stitching these on a beautiful neutral samplerish color fabric and um she completely changed started stitching them they're beautiful if i can find the photo on instagram i'll pop it in here but meanwhile like it's so funny jessica mentions the same thing she's like I want to stitch these now. I think she had these when they were part of a, of a club from Crazy Annie Stitching. She had de-stashed them. And now she's like, oh my gosh, I want to stitch them on neutral. She and I talk, talked about it. We went and we were talking about fabric and floss and all of the things. Um, because somebody, she's in contact with someone who's stitching them on neutral and got some of their color changes and all of that. So also sometime I think don't quote me on this. Jessica and I will both post on social media. We're going to do a October start for these as well, stitching them on neutral. Um, let me show you guys. Oh, I haven't even floss dropped. Oh yeah, I know what I was going to do for floss drop, but we'll talk about that later. So I have my floss. There are a couple of over dyes. Uh, Blue corn was one of them for something that's that color. And then I I need to grab lily pad from weeks. I think that's what I'm going to use for the green. I know that in all of these little leaves, it's two shades. And um, I wish I could remember who she said, gave her the conversion, said that they didn't want to switch. So they're using an overdyed instead of the DMC for that. But 
I will list all of that a little closer to the start date or when we start or whatever, but we're going to stitch these. I'm still trying to figure out my fabric. I do have winter brew pulled out currently. I'm going to stitch them on 36, but I think Jessica t talked about affogato. That's fiber on a whim, right? I think so. Yeah, it is. And I didn't have any, but since then, I have procured some affogato, so maybe I will stitch them on affogato too. I will have to lay it all out and really get a good idea, but going to stitch these, I love them um, and really excited. And you guys, the chart, I can't show you the chart, but it's all in color and it's be and it has lots of beautiful photos. So, so good. So thank you to Lori for inspiring me. Thank you to the wonderful Instagrammer for stitching them on neutral. I'm going to keep them all in this beautiful folio from Rika. I decided this is going to be my ornament folio. So, um, yeah. Good times. Okay, and then there is a stitch along that starts today, September 21st. It is hosted by my friends Jody Simply Stitching Ocala and Felicia of Floss and Blocks. And it is the fall, I'm gonna put the hashtag on the screen. I'm terrible with remembering hashtags. So that will be on the screen, but it's for the first day of fall and they are hosting the Dear Friends Sal and it's the Dear Friends Chart by Plum Street Samplers. Now, so in my haul portion of the video, uh, I ordered the chart from Jody. Jody has an Etsy shop called uh, Simply Stitching Ocala, and it is fantastic. I ordered the chart from there. She also sent this adorable needle minder. She has all kinds of wonderful things. She has some needle minders that are exclusive and limited for the holiday season. If you need like retreat gifts or stocking stuffer gifts for stitchy friends, all of that good stuff. She has tons of wonderful charts. I don't know if this one is still in stock, but definitely, you know, go look and see. She has charts, floss, kits. She has a lot of wonderful, like little kitted things, trims. Um, I'm showing some of the trim and stuff haul. And Jody so graciously sent an extra chart for me to give away to one of you guys. So um, I am going to uh, be doing that in this video today. Super, super excited. So thank you so much, Jody, and I'm super excited to start this tomorrow. I picked up all the called for floss. I needed to get it on a floss ring. This is a disaster. This is not what I would consider ideal. Um, I believe the fabric I pulled to stitch this on, and I think this is what I'm going to stitch, is 36 count sugar cookie by Color and Cotton. I did a, a floss toss, and I do love it. I think it's, the chart shows it is 36 count American chestnut, Amer chestnut, chestnut. See how it's nice and light. So I think I'm going to do this sugar cookie fabric. I think it'll be really, really pretty. So 36 count sugar cookie. If I change my mind, I'll let you guys know. I'm getting ready to put a post together for this. So um, excited to get this going tomorrow. And there's somebody out there. She knows who she is. She's been mentioned. I think she finished hers today, <laughs> which is Saturday. I'm filming this Saturday. Um, but I thought that was funny. She was like, oh, the sale starts Sunday. What? <laughs> um, anyway, I'm excited to see lots of people stitching on this. It's amazing. And stay tuned for the giveaway at the end of the video. Let's talk some sewing and quilting. Um, I did, I wanna pop on before I run to the post office to, or the mail to mail this. This is my Halloween tree skirt with Tim Holtz fabric from my stash. So a lot of this is pro, it's not even probably, it's not current. If I can find it, I will link to it below. Um, I also will link to the PDF pattern here um, on the screen and in the description that I used for this. I sewed this up quickly in one afternoon. And with my leftover fabric from this, I am stitching something else Halloween. So this, obviously it's folded in half. 
but I have a Halloween tree. I did do the small one. This is the 44 inch Halloween tree skirt. The backing fabric for this is the spider web fabric right here. It's my favorite. And this was still in stock at Fat Quarter Shop, so that's where I ordered my backing fabric from. And I'm sending it off to Caitlin at Knot and Thread. She's my quilter. I have been using Caitlin for years and love her. Um, she is going to quilt this for me. And I'm super excited to get it back, get it bound, and get it around my tree. So again, this is awesome. I wanted to, to do the whole Halloween tree last year. I know I've mentioned this probably in my last video, but as I mentioned, I have not watched it or to refresh myself <laughs> uh, what I said in that video, but I wanted to do a Halloween tree last year and I put it off and then I couldn't find a tree that I liked. So I have a six, um, a six foot pencil tree from Michaels and I will link it down in the description. I did start decorating it as far as like I bought a few like a little bit of ribbon and a few bits and bobs from Michaels but I want to fill it with cross stitch ornaments. I know I'm not going to have it filled this year so I'm going to put like a bunch of ribbon and and whatnot in there. I may even buy some some round ball ornaments or something to just kind of help fill it in for this year. But I'm gonna put like tuck some pumpkins under my tree or jack-o'-lanterns. I just really, and I'm loving it. It's already up. I have my little timer. So it comes on at five, goes off at midnight. I love it. It's super easy um, and just, brings me joy so do the things that bring you joy I'm excited to get ornaments on it I need to start finishing some um, but this is my quilted Halloween tree skirt well it's not quilted yet but it will be um, and again it's a super cute pattern and it comes in many sizes and obviously the picture that I've thrown here on the screen shows you the Christmas version so you can make it for Christmas and you can make it bigger to accommodate a bigger tree I did mine as small as it is it came so that I could have a small tree or just, yeah the smallest tree skirt possible for such a small tree because it's a pencil tree and whatnot but I have several tree skirt patterns I would actually like to make one for a couple of my trees this year for Christmas so we'll see I, I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself. Looking around my room, what you guys can't see, well, you can see the fabric behind me, so you know I have it. The amount of fabric and kits and, I was gonna say crap, but the amount of fabric and kits and projects in progress that I have going on, I'm not gonna promise anything. <laughs> I'm gonna just do what I can do. So this is my Halloween tree skirt with Tim Holtz fabric. In addition to all of the stitching start alongs and all of the quilting and all the things I wanna do, I was in a Zoom chat with friends. We do a monthly Zoom chat. And when I got on there, they were like, we're doing a swoon along. And I'm like, okay. Um, and funny enough, a Swoon 16, I have started the Swoon 16. You guys may remember this. I know some of you uh, mention it to me once in a while. Uh, I shared that I was starting the Swoon 16 and I have a quilt cut out. I already have it all cut out. Yay me, it's easier to start uh, for my son, for um, I wanted my oldest son. I have two. Let's, let's say which one. For my oldest son, I want to give each of my kids a quilt. And I have I actually have my, my oldest and my daughter's quilts cut out and just not sewn, uh, which is, you know, that's progress. That's half the battle. So we're doing a Swoon 16. I believe it starts October 1st. If that's wrong, I'm going to change it. I'll put the hashtag. This is, again, hosted by Jody Simply Stitching Ocala. Felicia, Floss and Blocks, and there's a whole bunch of us joining in. Rika, Jessica, um, I think Alicia is joining in. Jess of Como Stitches, she's an amazing sewer. So there's several of us. I'm probably forgetting someone, forgive me. Check out all the Instagram posts, check out the hashtag. I will say, I told them I feel like I'm, I'm lying or I'm kind of cheating, not lying, cheating, because I do have one block done. Now, this is for my son. 
So I am using, I believe it's Nantucket by Camille Ross Kelly. Because it's for my son, the most floral you're going to get here is this. Um, I purposely chose a lot of the plaids, polka dots, stripey. Well, I don't know. Yeah, there's a stripe. Well, no, it's plaid. I just pick things that weren't the big, beautiful florals that Camille's known for and that I personally love. Like, I got my own stuff going on with that. I don't want to, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more manly. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything because he is very kind. My youngest would have been like, why are there flowers? <laughs> But Brendan wouldn't, but I, I need to iron this, I noticed. I did this a long, long time ago. Anyway, what I wanted to say was join us if you want to. Here is a lot of, I can't tip it. This is when a down camera would have been really handy. Fun, fun note, I did dump this on the floor this week. It sat for months on a design board, and this week I dumped it and had to fix it. So you can see that I have my blocks cut. I am super excited to do this uh, for for him for Christmas. He'll never see this, so it does not matter. Um, and what I wanted to say was I have actually sewn a swoon quilt, the original swoon, many years ago. Uh, it's been well over 10. I want to say it was like 12-ish years ago. Uh, so I'm going to show that guy to you guys right now. And it's completely a hodgepodge of different fabrics. I really just went to my stash and had fun. I was really into teal, teal, aqua, yellow, and navy. So you're going to see that. I have no idea the fabrics. I quilted it on, I, I pieced it. I quilted it on my own machine. It was before I sent off my quilts to be quilted by other people. And I'd use someone else prior to using Caitlin. What was I doing? I mean, I I did a good job for me for on my home machine. I was using my Janome Horizon machine, which I love. I still have and love. Um, I do use a Juki now for most of my piecing, but it's it's good. But I'm like, girl, what were you thinking? But it's fun to see. And funny enough, I still curl up with it. It is down in the base or it was down in the basement. That's where it, it, it lives on a quilt ladder down there or in a, a basket. And so I'm going to show it to you. Okay. She's big. And like I said, it is completely a hodgepodge of fabric. So I'm going to try to show block by block. Here's one. Two. Forgot there's green in here too. And look at this backing. This is uh, V and Co. I believe I loved this backing so much. Okay, let me fold over. These blocks are big. So there's four. Five, six, and I'm going to dump it the other way because that's going to be easier. <laughs> and seven, eight, and nine. So this is my swoon quilt. Um, really, really love it. Here, I'll show you. I'm pretty proud of that quilting. Like, I'm pretty proud of it. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Everything about this bad boy was done by me. So anyway, this is my original swoon, nine blocks. Highly recommend doing a swoon quilt. They, She has so many different swoons now. Obviously these are gonna be a little bit smaller block, 16 blocks in this one. But do four, do a little table topper or do the row of, uh, do four in a square table topper, do a row of four, a row of three or four for a table runner. Um, you could do one and do a pillow. Our friend, oh, Allison, Allison of Alley Cat, she's joining us. I knew I forgot someone. Allison, sorry. 
Allison made the most adorable pillow. I bet it's on her Instagram. I need to go back and double check. She showed it to us during the Zoom. She made a swoon block and put a stitch in the center of it. It is so cute. So, so cute. Um, so that is another idea. I know that there's a, uh, like, I want to say, I say giant. It's a giant swoon block, but it is just a quilt made from one. There's a mini swoon if you want to do a little wall hanging. But join us if you'd like to do the swoon quilt along. I'm excited. I'm going to do my very best to like get that one stitched and get it off and get it back so that I am just ready for Christmas gift giving. I My plan is to give my daughter and her husband and my oldest quilts this year. Let's be honest, Ethan is, is going to be 19. He could care less. I think he would like a quilt, but I have an idea of what I want to make him. It just depends on if I feel that ambitious. It won't be this year. I already know this. It won't be this year and he does, he won't care. If I decide to do it, I'll tell you guys what it is, <laughs> but um, we'll see. We will just see. Um, anyway, keep me accountable. Keep me accountable. I want to give both of those as gifts this year. I really, really do. I want my kids to have quilts for me. Um, Peyton had one. She used to have one as a bedspread a quilt on her bed for years. And then of course that just kind of went, that wasn't her style anymore. That was like during middle school, high school. Um, she has a throw one that I think she still keeps in the trunk of her car, which is funny enough um, that she used to take with her like on the bus trips and stuff when she played sports. I don't think I've made one. Oh no, I made one for Ethan's bed too. It's only Brendan. So Brendan really deserves one. And he's really into decorating his apartment. And he's been, he's so cute. He like set up this whole bar area and he's really into wanting to put like art on the walls. And he's called, he's, can we FaceTime mom? I mean, I could go over there. He doesn't live that far away, but he's like, calls me on a Sunday. Can we FaceTime? I need help figuring out where to put my furniture. He's like moving it around, seeing what works better. He's hilarious. Um, so he would love having something to decorate his apartment with. I think like to throw over the couch, just to throw over him when he's watching football or whatever. I just really, really want them to have these th from me so that they have them. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. Um, so that's my plan for the kiddos and, or for, or for my quilt along. And I'm excited. Join in if you want to. And I think that's it. All right. We're going to talk haul. I am going to probably piece this together with what I previously recorded. I'm sorry if it's a little disjointed. There is just been so many, um, breaks and I, I've put too much away to go pull it all out. So I want to share, I know I showed this in my other haul. I think I showed all of that. Um, it's been a few weeks, so obviously I have some haul. I wanted to show my color and cotton for September came. I am in the neutral and the colorful fabric club and this month they're very they're both what I would consider more of a neutral so this is 36 count Ophelia it is gorgeous I did consider this for the dear friends it it's a contender it's a little bit more less yellow than dear friends or dear friends than sugar cookie it's a little bit lighter. I think, I think I'm going to like the other one. So, uh, but this is gorgeous. I know that I was a little bit late getting mine. For some reason, I'm always a little late getting my color and cotton order. Uh, but Jessica messaged me and said, oh my gosh, have you got it yet? You're, we're going to want more. <laughs> She's right. It is beautiful. Okay. So that is my color and cotton neutral. My color fabric is dandelion. You guys, this is beautiful. So it definitely is a yellowish tint to it. So I know why it's color, but I think this is a beautiful, beautiful, um, almost samplery yellow color. So absolutely gorgeous dandelion. 
love both the colors. I love the colors that they send. I'm also in the neutral and primitive thread clubs. I got all of them. So this is the colors. And you know, Lori mentioned this too. These are good purples. She called me and we were talking about it. These are super good purples. Really, really good. Um, some fantastic Christmas colors. And I thought the primitive palette was perfect for fall. I'm going to try to incorporate this into something fall. Anyway, beautiful. I always love getting that every month. I mentioned that Affogato might be on the docket for the stockings. I picked it up from Fat Quarter Shop. I got the 36 and I bought 40 because I am loving stitching on 40 so, 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 so much. Okay, and I also picked up, didn't even take it out of the package. We're going to do it now. I did pick up some 40 count stormy new, uh, linen, which is a great gray color. Okay, and here's why I picked it up. And yes, I picked it up in 40 because I love 40. I hope it's not too tiny. But um, Primrose Cottage is starting. They do their uh, free, is it free quilt Friday? Is that what it's called? I hope I'm calling it the right thing. Uh, they're starting their free stitch Friday. It's going to come out that first Friday in October. And they said that Stormy is Stormy Night is what it's called. Uh, Stormy Night fabric is what they stitched it on. I think the model was stitched on 32 count. I think you can buy kits from their shop. I'll tell you why I didn't. Uh, the only options they had were Ada and Lugana, and I don't stitch on either. So um, I'm going, I'm taking a chance with my 40 count, but I did purchase, um, and that's the only way to get the floss. And they're using three Cottage Garden threads flosses, which I love. Um, and three DMCs, I think three DMCs, three or four. So I, I'm taking a chance that I will like the chart because I love their Halloween. They do great Halloween. Uh, and I bought this because I figured that's great. And then I did find Cottage Garden Threads because it is an Australian company or New Zealand. I, I can't remember. Um, I didn't want to wait for the threads to try to get them. So I found them in stop at, stock at Hobby House. And I ordered the cottage garden threads from there because they're great Halloween colors. And so I'm, I'm going out on a limb, guys. We, let's see if I, if I like it. But I, I put it out there here. Now you heard it. So that's why I got that. Um, okay, Roberta of the Sable Stitchers shared that she had finished this. She showed her little pillow. And I realized I did not have this Blackbird Designs When the Leaves Fall. I have the other book that I can't think of the name of, and it's not right here right now, but it has the wonderful uh, Crow Berry. Um, and I have it pulled, and there's a reason why we're not going to talk about it this week. We'll talk about it next week. This video is going to be so long anyway. So I had to get this, and shout out to the Silver Needle uh, in... Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I ordered it from there. I found it in stock there and their website is a little old school, but trust the process. <laughs> uh, I ordered this from them. I also, if you t heard me talk about the Shepherd's Bush stockings, they did a great was it a New Year's sale or Black Friday sale? I can't remember. They do a great sale each year. So follow them. Follow them on Instagram. I'll, ta I'll put them, tag them down below. Um, and I got everything like 25 or 30% off. I can't remember. It was fantastic. They And they were wonderful. So, so wonderful. But uh, you may have to wait just a little bit. But they wrote me the sweetest little note and said that they love my Instagram and we're just keep doing it or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. So um, Silver Needle, 
is where I got this. And you know, I can't just buy one thing. I realized I hadn't picked up the Quaker from Primrose Cottage. So I did go ahead and pick this up. I have the a couple of the others I wanted. I may have shown them in the haul or I may have already shown them. I have no idea. I don't even know who I am most of the days this month. So I got these two things from there. Plus I think I needed a couple of threads that I picked up. Um, anyway, Silver Needle, they're a fantastic LNS if you're ever in Tulsa. Um, I have been there in real life too. My friend Karen doesn't live very far away. And so Lori and Karen and I have gone. We need to go again. We need to go for a class because they do have classes and stuff there periodically. And I would love to go to a class there. Okay. Um, oh, also from Fat Quarter Shop, I it's not that this is the best needle minder, like design-wise, I've ever seen, but I had to get this because, let's be honest, we've all frogged things, and I thought it was hilarious, and it does match the inside of my, my um, Winterberry stitch case because the inside of my stitch case is bright pink, but I picked this up. It says, Son of a Stitch. And I thought it was too funny. <laughs> so I'll, I'll link this down below too, because I got it at Fat Quarter Shop and I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was funny. I hope it doesn't offend anyone. But I thought it was funny. And then I know I've shown a lot of these, but this is my latest um, case from Rika of Houses and Stitch and Stash. I love blue. This is actually going to house my sampler, my Polly Maria sampler, because I thought it just matched perfectly. Um, so absolutely gorgeous. Rika does such a good job. I It's sold out, so I'm not going to uh, mention it, but she did have a, she did her first ever Christmas release. She has a beautiful chart coming out. So a chart, you could choose por portfolio or a, a bag or I can't remember. She had a lot of different options. I've seen a sneak peek of the chart. It's beautiful. I hope she releases it later on. Um, but absolutely amazing. Super excited. I, and I'm just going to put this out here because I've not said anything publicly. But I get to meet Rika in person next month. I did get in late <laughs> to Stitch West. So, um, and I actually got in beginning of August. Yeah. So uh, I will be there. If you're going to be at Stitch West, drop me a note down below. I would love to meet you. Um, so I'm excited to get to go with my friends. I thought I wasn't going to get to go and it ended up that my original plans had fallen through and I was so sad because everyone was going. And on a whim, I reached out to Debbie and Kef and <laughs> I was able to get in. So, uh, yeah, super excited. And the best thing, uh, something else I've not publicly said here, is that my daughter and son-in-law actually moved. Uh, they're living in Colorado now. And they both got promotions and new jobs. Super excited. So, <laughs> the weekend of Stitch West is my daughter's birthday weekend. And my connection flight is is in Denver. She's going to come get me and I'm going to stay the night with them and celebrate her birthday before I come home. I'm so, so, so excited and so excited for them. Um, a lot of, I've had people be like, are you sad? And I'm not, I'm not sad. That's what your kiddos are supposed to do. I mean, it is a little sad that she just can't run over because she did help out you know, and stuff with the dogs, or we could just go for supper or for lunch or coffee or whatever, or shopping, our favorite thing. Uh, but, you know, I want what's best. And this is their dream. They are living their best life. That's what they wanted to do. That's where they wanted to be. Um, the opportunities and promotions. My son-in-law has, is a has a really good promotion. She got the promotion she wanted as well, which was a very good promotion. I'm very, very excited for them. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's all of my excitement for that. Um, 
Jessica had sent me a message and then I noticed she saw showed this in her floss tube as well but she showed um, an account on Instagram and forgive me I can't think of it right now if I remember I'll put it here on the screen uh, that shared this amazing haunted house shadow box from Michaels that someone was using to display their Halloween smalls and I thought it was so super cute so I ran to my Michaels and picked one up and I actually here's a little tip if you have a Michaels try to see if they have it in stock and do order pickup that's what I did the one closest to me was out of stock and the one clear 30 some minutes away from me had um, two so I ordered this for pickup and I ran over and picked it up one evening so um, it does they do have these um, also, I to ship, or they did, if they still do, I am going to link it down below. If you can use a coupon, better yet. But they, the gal on Instagram showed like her Brenda Gervais little pillows and stuff tucked in here. And I thought, wouldn't this be so cute in your Halloween displays to put other like little pumpkins or little nicky knack things in. So love, love, love this haunted house. Thanks to Jessica for, uh, sending sending me down that rabbit hole but grab your haunted house at michael's okay i also want to thank april of crafty blue bonnet designs for passing along her rudolph spool so you guys know i did that bunny spool back in the spring i link it here or down in the description or both uh where it's two-sided this is another one of her two-sided designs would make a darling ornament so fun. So thank you, April, for sending the Rudolph spool. I could hardly wait for this to come. This is Animal Crackers Nettle from Stacy Nash. I'm kidding this one up very, very soon. I'm very excited about this. Okay, um, also Jody posted, I think on Instagram, that she had restocked a bunch of fun trims from Lady Dot Creates. I got her Grubby Jack, this uh, hand dyed ribbon. I got Grubby Witchy. Obviously, there's a theme here. Grubby Gate, just fantastic fall colors. I got some more vintage. I've had vintage before. I love it. And Grubby Toast. Look at that color. Here's the colors. You can see them a lot better here. Aren't they gorgeous? And then she also had this awesome black measuring tape, like ruler tape. Um, I have the natural primitive color, but I like this black. So I picked that up while I was shopping. I happened to notice this in her shop and I'm obsessed with all things Plum Street. So I grabbed this Mary You design. So it has the fun little sheep. It's obviously Christmas themed. It doesn't go with any of my Halloween, but I had to have it. And then, um, so I was, I did purchase a couple of kits from Farm Girl, from Farm Girl Dry Goods. She kitted up the new Brenda Gervais Feels Like Fall with the called for fabric, which was 40 count. All the floss, all of that good stuff. I think this one was a bee stitch me, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. Or maybe this one. I don't know. Hold on. I'll just tell you because I wanted the fabric. Yeah, this is, no, this is Boot Camp by Bee Stitch Me for the Gorgeous Gracious. So I wanted the called for fabric and this was a third, didn't I? I just had that open. That was 36, but I wanted the fabric, so I got that. And then this one is Thornfield by Needle and Flax, duh. Yeah, so I got these two kits straight from Farm Girl Dry Goods, all kitted up and ready to go. I also picked up the rest of the Brenda Gervais fall charts. This is Autumn's Swan. And then I got Woodland Witch, obviously part of the Halloween. Love her love love this so much 
Okay, this segment is Thank You Fat Quarter Shop. Fat Quarter Shop has so graciously sent some wonderful things to me to share with you guys. Some of the stuff I'll keep, some will be used for future giveaways, but let's do a sew sampler. I think this is the August unboxing and let's see what is inside. Okay, so their boxes always come so beautifully packaged. When you open it up, there is a great little um, insert inside on the back is a coupon code so I won't flip that over because that is only for uh, the recipient of the box. This month though for example was 20% off layer cakes so it's always something really awesome. This is called Fables of Fall. You always get this wonderful little handout telling you exactly what is inside. So let's just start at the beginning. Okay first up you get the, I think it's Verbena Folk and Lore Junior Layer Cake. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. This is by Fancy That Design House for Moda Fabrics. It is a beautiful layer cake, fallish colors, obviously, so pretty. I'm not going to open it. This is valued at $25.48. You also get this wonderful six inch clammy ruler by. Um, Let's see, Latifa Safir Studios. I'm so sorry, I'm probably butchering that. This is valued at $18.98. My guess is this wonderful, let's move this. This wonderful ruler is used to make the pattern included. Let's keep going. You also get the Olfa 28 inch quick change rotary cutter valued at $15.98. I love my Olfa. You get the Verbena quilt pattern. Oh, it is, and it's super pretty. Oh, that's really pretty, you guys. I like that. This is the quilt pattern. It measures 78 and a half inches square. And on the back, it tells you what else you need. Look at that. That is a pretty quilt. Really, really like this. So you get the, the pattern valued at $9.98. Let's flip it over here to the back. You also get a white butterfly mechanical pencil. Nice. Oh, it does white lines. I need this. Fantastic, gonna be using this today for something I'll be showing you in an upcoming video. And then I got the, or the, it comes with the Peaceful Baskets 4 block. Um, let me cover up, because I don't wanna give the instructions. I do have the Peaceful Baskets quilt, and this is valued at $4.98, the quilt kit, pardon me. Have I started it? That's a no, I really want to, but I am promised myself I'm finishing all of the partially started projects first. Okay, that is the August Sew Sampler. Some of this will be in a future giveaway probably next week. So stay tuned for that. Okay. So they sent the Cozy Mittens Floss Drops. Absolutely adorable. Perfect for your winter and Christmas stitching projects. They're reusable, so, so nice, so cute. Okay, and there will be links to everything I'm showing here from Fat Quarter Shop down in the description. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. They also sent their Woven Star Quilt Block Foundation Paper in four inch and six inch. These are gorgeous. I love their foundation paper. So, so good. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. They've sent um, a few new patterns. So they sent this Fox Hollow quilt pattern. And this is a 52 and a half inch square quilt. Here's, look at that. Optional six half square triangle paper that you can use with it. I like that, super pretty. The Hidden Stars quilt pattern by Kim Deal. This measures 60 and a half by 70 and a half. And again, these will be future giveaways. They sent the August Beehive Shelf Life chart. 
for all of my bee stitching lovers. Super cute. The Gather Mini Simply Signs. Very, very cute. And they also sent the spooky, cute ornaments, their book with the spooky, cute ornaments. These are adorable. They're the they're design that they do in the little tins. And thank you, Fat Quarter Shop, for sending all of these wonderful things to share with my viewers. Okay, so I know I shared the August sew sampler box from Fat Quarter Shop. Wouldn't you know it, the September box showed up. So spoiler alert, if you have not received your September box and you're waiting for it, you don't want spoilers, skip ahead just a little bit so you don't get spoiled. But I am going to share what's in it and it is my favorite collection, I think, of the fall. Uh, super, super love. So as always, when you open up the box, it's beautiful. This is the September box. It's just really, really well done. Okay, I am gonna set it down. The coupon code for uh, the September box is for 15% off Jolly Bars. And of course the code is only available if you buy a box. And they generally have a few a la carte boxes. Um, I will either update here or whatever if there are any, or if there are any right at the moment. So right off the bat, bat, and I already opened it, the Jolly Bar included, well, I think you can see it better here, is Denim and Daisies by Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts. And there is a Jolly Bar pattern in here that is really cute. Super, super cute. And then there's another quilt idea on the... I'm covering up the coupon code. Oops. I'm going to cover up the coupon code and the QR code. But look at that quilt. Absolutely amazing. Okay. So, Denim and Daisies. Now, I have Denim and Daisies because I'm sewing with Denim and Daisies. And I am going to show you all of that Tuesday. I'm going to have a big update on Instagram. And then in next week's video, I'm going to have a lot of sewing to share with you guys. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then you saw in the quilting segment where I talked about the quilt along I'm doing. Remember how I said fall is where I want to do all of the things. That is, that's the thing. Okay, so uh, Denim and Daisies Jolly Bar. Because I have so much of this already, but... I can always use more. I have another plan for this. I don't think I'll have it for next week, but maybe. We'll see. I'm going to use this actually for something else, and I'm so, so excited, so stay tuned. And I probably should have started with this because I do think that this is the best part of this, is it talks about, it shows you everything you get, and it gives you the retail value. So the Jolly Bar valued at $22.98. Next up, the pattern that they sent for the Jolly Bar is this one called Reflections. This pattern is valued at $9.98. You do have to get additional background, backing, border, and binding, as well as backing fabric to do it. This is a really cool pattern, really, really pretty. Okay, and I said how much that was valued. The Peaceful Baskets block came. It's the Ohio Star Basket. So cute. I have that to start, as always, I think I've mentioned. Let me see what's next in the box. Oh, a ruler. Do I have this one already? If I don't, I'm if I don't, I'm keeping it. If I do, I'll give it away. But the Creative Grids 5.5 inch square ruler. I, Creative Grids is my favorite ruler. So awesome. I love when they give that. And that is valued at $18.49. Really, really nice. You get some light sand cotton Mako thread by Arafil in here, valued at $5.98. Oh, here's that little Jolly Ball Jelly Bar pattern for Denim and Daisies that was in here. That's a nice little bonus. I'm probably gonna give those away 
to be honest, just not the fabric. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I got the Clover Mini Hot Ruler. I actually love these. I do use this. So this is valued at $9.98. I don't know if mine is like this or not. This one says a Fat Quarter Shop exclusive. It's fantastic for folding over and getting the perfect seam. Absolutely amazing. It's a hot, called a hot ruler. Highly, highly recommend that. And I forgot to say the Peaceful Basket Block is valued at $4.98. So thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. Love this. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do with products from the box. And my goal going forward is to start showing you guys... Maybe not always, not every single box, but I'm going to try for the most part to make something with some of the components or all of the components, whatever the case may be, of the Sew Sampler box. So stay tuned for that. Very, very excited to get a little more sewing content going here. I know I've said that I want to do that and that just has to become a priority or I'm never going to do it. Okay. Um... I do know what else I'm going to show you guys. So the Stitch Quarterly. I wasn't going to show it when I thought the video was going up last week, but now I am. Obviously, beautiful mesh bag from Fat Quarter Shop, printed with the adorable wheelbarrow with pumpkins. Beautiful. Let's take, if you are waiting on yours and you don't want to be have the uh, surprise, skip ahead, please. So let me show you guys what all you get in here. As always, it is always beautifully curated. And I'm going to take everything out. Stitch count for the design in the chart is 84 by 84. And you can guess it's that adorable wheelbarrow with a crow, pumpkins, acorns, leaves, absolutely precious. Love that. You get Platinum 14 Count Ada by Wichelt to stitch it on. You get the DMC and Overdyed plus a John James Needle. Oh my gosh, I'm keeping these. You're not going to get the full kit this time, you guys. You get this awesome little scissor case with some little scissors in it. And these look nice and sharp. These are beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys. What are these? <laughs> it says somewhere. Let me look. Anyway, some adorable scissors. I'm totally keeping them. Totally keeping them because I like them. Nice and heavy. I kind of noticed I like the little heavier scissors. We're going to try them, see what I think. And then I'm also keeping this for my enamel pin display. They generally have these available for individual purchase as well. It's this hedgehog enamel needle minder. How adorable is that? Super, super cute. Anyway, that is the Stitch Quarterly. And again, thank you, Fat Quarter Shop, so much for sending so many beautiful things that I could share with you today. Um, as you can see, there, there has been a lot. Okay, I forgot to um, announce a giveaway during the video, so I am inserting a screenshot here. Vanessa Blevins, you won the Neighborhood Cross Stitch Bundle from Philostube92. Please email me at the address down in the description below and I will get your prize mailed out to you. Thank you so much. Okay, we are going to do some giveaways. Since I have been gone for a few weeks, I thought let's have, let's have some awesome giveaways, okay? Um, so I have several things that I want to give away today. In order to be considered for the giveaways, please be, um, for the, actually anything that I'm showing here today, I will ship anywhere. I don't always do that, but they're charts. So I think that that will be fine. So I, you don't have to be U.S. only. Um, so I am going to do several giveaways 
please be over 18 since I have to ask for your address in order to ship. Don't leave giveaway or anything like that in your comment and use the numbers that I put on the screen and answer a question for me down in the comments. So make you can put all of the numbers if you want to, but don't write all. If you want one, two, and four, put one, two, and four. Um, and just leave the, the number, don't write out the number. I use a random comment picker to choose winners, so that makes it a lot easier for me. Um, if you leave those numbers, I just search by the number and whoever it spits out is the winner. Um, so leave your numbers and if you want all of the things, just put one, two, three, four. I don't know how many I have. I'm gonna write down the numbers on these as we go um, and answer this question. Uh, what are you working on? Are you working on Sampler September, Spooky September, Sunflower September, something else, still working on Patriotic? Just tell me what you're working on. If you're working on something monogamously, if you're working on a whole bunch of different things, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys and hearing uh, what you're stitching on. It inspires me a lot. And, um, I will put across the screen how long the giveaways are open for. When it's that date, that means any uh, comments left after the date that is shown here on the screen will not be considered. So let me start. So the first thing is, is I accidentally ordered two of these first two charts and that's because I ordered the charts and then they were kitted up at Farm Girl Dry Goods. You saw that in the haul. And so I bought it as the kit because I wanted the fabric. So I'm going to give away my extra charts today. The first one is Brenda Gervais Gordness Gracious. This is a new release for this season. Put a one in your comment if you would like to win Gordness Gracious. That is one. And we're gonna put our sticky notes on it because you guys, it's been a while since I've done this. We gotta keep ourselves on track. Number two, leave a two in the comment if you would like Feels Like Fall. Also from Brenda Gervais, brand new. I, let's be honest, I bought all the new ones from her. So that is a number two if you want Feels Like Fall. Crazy Annie Stitchin sent me her latest signs of Christmas. Um, and I have several different ones here. So there's going to be, I'm going to send all of these to one winner. So we have Santa's Parade. Look at Santa in his sleigh. Even if you leave the words off and you just stitch Santa as an ornament, adorable. We have Christmas Market. And I love Festival of Lights. I love that little snowman. Okay, so this is number three. Leave a three in the comment if you would like these three signs of Christmas charts. And thank you to Crazy Annie Stitchin for sending these along for a giveaway. Okay, number four. So also from my haul and talking about upcoming sales that I'm participating in, we are doing the um, first day of fall sale. I'm doing it with Jody Simply Stitching Ocala and my friend Felicia of Floss and Blocks. And they are hosting the Plum Street Samplers Dear Friends Sal, and I did purchase the chart from Jody. She has a shop on Etsy. Um, I know I probably mentioned this in the segment on haul because I got some other things from her as well, but I just wanna mention her again. She has a fantastic Etsy shop. She's carrying lots of charts, fabric bundles, trims, all of the things, but Jody sent me an extra Dear Friends chart as well as some wonderful Lady Dot Creates um, chenille trim. I have these colors and she wanted to, uh, she gave this, sent this to me to use as a giveaway for you guys. Leave a four in the comments if you want the chart and the Lady Dot Creates trim. And that is four. And finally today, my friend Tabitha 
sent a chart for me to give away. I want to share the card because I'm not doing a mail segment today. So I wanted to share this card she made me. Thank you so much, Tabitha. She is such a great um, supporter and I just appreciate her so much. But she got this chart, the Crown Family Sampler from Tiger Lily. Um, and this was in one of Carrie's recent boxes and she didn't think she was going to stitch it and she wanted to share it with one of you guys. So thank you, it's perfect for Sampler September. Um, and this is number five. So leave a five if you would like the chart only. It's not the whole uh, kit and caboodle, it's just Carrie's chart. So for all of my sampler lovers, um, this is number five. Thank you guys for joining me today for this very, very long floss tube episode. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for your patience. For those of you who have been so understanding, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I promise I will be back to a more regular schedule. I have not gone anywhere. I'm still stitching and doing all of the things because I love it just like you do. I hope all of you have a wonderful stitchy week and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. It is Sunday, September 23rd, 2nd. We're going to talk about spooky charts. I will do fall charts in another video. Maybe we'll even do them next week. We'll see. Or maybe the first week in October. Let me think about this. Yes, we might do it next week. In fact, this, do you see that row is not finished? It's all half stitches I need to fully finish. Is it? Or no, they are full. Well, they are full. I'm an idiot. Uh, in my haul video that is going to, that I'm editing some of it in, some of it will be filmed right now, but some of it will be edited in, that, um, I think, or I may refilm it, who the heck knows, who cares. Uh, she has charts, she has, um, hello.